Hi Laura, I just wanted to make a quick response video to a video put out by the Potter's Clay on the 24th, just a couple of days ago. Um, seems to be causing a bit of a stir with flat earthers. And he thinks he's uncovered some massive problem with the eclipse that couldn't possibly be explained by the Earth being a sphere. So he's noticed that on our standard model of the rotating Earth like this, uh, the Moon is orbiting the Earth at a rotational speed much less than the Earth. So the place where the Moon is directly overhead moves from east to west. However, he's noticed, horror of horrors, on time and date, the eclipse moves from west to east in the opposite direction. Now, obviously, he's jumped to the conclusion that there couldn't possibly be a reasonable explanation for this, that it couldn't possibly be that he just doesn't understand it. No, that would be too simple. It would be too simple for him to just do a few Google searches and try and find out exactly how an eclipse works and why he's wrong and why there's no problem with this. Right. So if we look on here on time and date, you can see at 1700, the total eclipse will be here, just over the Pacific Ocean. But the moon is down here in the Caribbean. Now notice that the place where the moon is overhead is not the same place where the eclipse is. Very confusing. Now, if we jump forward, 20 hundred hours, the eclipse, yeah, has moved from west to east and is now over the Atlantic. But the moon, if we go to 20 hundred hours on the same day, has moved from east to west and is now over the Pacific. So what's going on? How can the moon be moving from east to west, but the eclipse is moving from west to east? Well, if you understand the simple geometry of how it's working, it's not a mystery at all. I'll try and explain why. So if you look at this diagram here, um, the large blue circle on the left represents the Earth, and the smaller grey one on the right represents the Moon. So in this diagram, we're concerned about where the Moon is directly overhead. Now the sun is a long way away and these orange lines represent rays from the sun which will be parallel. Now there will be a band of light that's hitting the earth from the sun and that's between these two orange lines here. Now in reality that band of light would be cylinder shaped because the earth is a sphere. Um, but we can only show this in two dimensions, but it doesn't matter. It makes this in the main points. You can easily extrapolate this to three dimensions if you want. So the moon is going around the earth and then it passes into the light between the earth and the sun, therefore casting a shadow on the earth. And then it moves across here and then it moves out again. So if it's in this band of light, it's casting a shadow on the Earth. Now, the place where it is directly overhead is determined by the line directly from the Moon to the centre of the Earth. Now, if you notice, the place where it's directly overhead doesn't move very much as the Sun, sorry, as the Moon crosses the light Sun. Sorry, the Sun's light. So it starts here and then it goes to here, and you can see that it's not very it's not moved very far across the surface of the earth. Now, this isn't to scale. To scale the moon would be much further away, so this the angle that it turns through would be even less. Okay, so the amount that the moon moves across the earth is determined by this angle. So the speed at which it'll move is determined by the rotational speed of the moon around the earth. 
Now let's consider the shadow cast by the moon. Not the same thing. So again, the moon comes into the light hitting the earth from the sun and moves across it and then moves out of it. Now the shadow is cast from the moon and the place where it will hit the earth is determined by this line which is parallel to the sunlight. So you draw a line from the moon to the earth that's parallel to the sunlight to find out where the shadow is. So as the moon crosses the light hitting the earth, the shadow crosses all the way across the earth. So the speed that it's moving at is determined by the speed that the moon is moving at. Not its rotational speed, its actual speed which is about 2,300 miles an hour. So this shadow is moving across the Earth much faster. Now, let's imagine that we're looking down onto the North Pole. So this dot here is the North Pole. So this is the equator around the outside. Now, if we're looking down on the North Pole, the, the Earth will be rotating anti-clockwise. But a point at the equator is moving at 1,040 miles an hour. But the shadows moving at about 2,300 miles an hour. So it's moving faster than the Earth is turning. So therefore, it will move from west to east. Okay, let's go through the main points again. The place where it's overhead is determined by the line from the centre of the Moon to the centre of the Earth. How much it moves is determined by that angle. So how fast it moves is determined by the angular speed or the rotational speed of the moon around the earth. And it only moves a small amount from about here to about here. So the earth is moving faster. So the moon moves from east to west. When we're worried about the shadow, the place where the shadow is cast is determined by the line from the moon to the earth that's parallel to the sunlight. And the place where the shadow is cast moves right across the earth. And the speed it's moving at is determined by the speed of the moon, not its angular or rotational speed which is about 2,300 miles an hour. So although the Earth is turning in this direction, it's turning slower. So the Moon moves from west to east. And that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. Now, as I said, this is only in two dimensions, but you can easily extend this argument to three dimensions if you want. Okay? The main point is... The place where the moon is directly overhead is not the place where the moon is casting a shadow on the earth. Not necessarily. Okay? And that is the core of the confusion in this rather silly video.